your host Cy Smith coming to you on a fourth Saturday of the month. Every fourth Saturday of each month, you guys, is one of my most exciting times of, the, uh, of each month because what it means is that we're going to be concluding the work, the tour, the things that we've done since the last fourth Saturday of the month. So every fourth uh, weekend, actually, um, by design, it's a fun time for us is when we get together, uh, uh, fellowship with each other, share what each other been able to do to move our society forward uh, regarding uh, making life better for our community. So for me, it's an honor every fourth Saturday to be in front of you. Years past, if you look on YouTube, you'll see um, uh, us, you know, with the old video camera filming and posting it later. But now with this technology, I can be 600 miles away from headquarters in, in uh, Chicago and still go through and do this uh, summit. So the format, just so you guys know, we have a lot to cover. Um, the topics move pretty rapidly. Um, the number is not on the screen, but I did send it out. And it's on my Facebook for those people who may want to dial in and call in. Um, I didn't do too much work to invite people um, because it was last names F through K. Anyone last names F through K were the targets for this month. And so uh, anyone can call in, anyone can dial in, anyone can jump on this live and we are uh, open you, we'll welcome you with open arms. So the topics are going to be fast and furious, what we're going to be talking about. I just put on the screen here. So you guys can see this is the opening starting now at three o'clock central time. Then uh, we're going to move over to safety at 320. So in between that time, I'm just uh, doing roll call. We're going to go through the zip codes. We're going to talk about Mississippi or rural towns and the links between rural towns and what we're building and what we've built here. Then I'm going to talk about the money we raised uh, in July. And then we're going to get down into safety. Uh, starting at 320 and then we're going to run down from safety we go through missing persons then we move into economic development so let's go through what you see right in front of you right now first and foremost i want to go to that's next month so national block club university whole mission is stopping this senseless killing that we see happening in almost every neighborhood all over the nation and so we go about it with a block by block approach. That's what we do. We have 20 zip codes in Chicago, all linked to a different city, US city, a different career field, a different suburb and a different country in Africa. Uh, what I've learned over the 20 years of doing this is creating these certain last names to focus on has been a big help because what this has done is it alleviated me burning out people constantly every month coming to the fourth Saturday summits, even though it's in a different part of the city, still the, the monogamy of constantly coming to the same event. Now, only come twice a year, every six months. What you're looking at right in front of you are the people who should be uh, active on this uh, Zoom and um, hopefully will be active in February, because last names F through K is every February and August. Let me get my annotation here. We are recording and we should be on Facebook Live now. Um, for those people who's gonna just listen in, uh, this is gonna be better for you. For those people who don't wanna sit and look at my face <laughs> the whole time, that's cool. So let's get to this. Let me share this new screen here so you guys can see. So. What you're looking at right here as we open up here is the last name solution. The purpose of this is because we've learned based on Chicago that people are busy, people have a lot going on. And so by us creating this here, last name solution, we only concentrate on these last names right here, F, G, H, I, J, and K. So anyone who last name begins with the alphabet F, and these are some, some examples, the Fears, the Fellows, the Fishers, the Frasers, the Foremans. This, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Uh, after today, we only have nine days before. We would, we would not bug you again until February. 
as you can see right here, it is every February and August. That's it, every February and August. That's the only time we bug people who last names begin with the letters F through K. Uh, then here, the G's are Gnors, Gibbs, Godleys, Goldsmiths, Gordons, any last name you can think of that begins with the alphabet G. It this is it. This is it. We got a little background noise here. Sorry about that. All right. Then the H's, all the Halls, the Hardys, the Haydens, the Harrises, the, the Hendersons, the Hicks, Hopkins, Hubbards. Now, let me tell you why this matters so much, you guys. I hope this resonates with you. Right now, as we speak, on Saturdays in Chicago, we like this. Saturdays in Atlanta, we like this. <laughs> Saturdays in Gary, people are doing their own thing as well, just not the intensity. So what I've learned over the years is that if everyone keeps doing what they're doing, when do we synchronize? When do we have uh, coalition and agreement widespread? Uh, sometimes only when tragedy strike, strikes that it's a state of emergency, then people stop what they're doing and we come together. Well, with this new system, Last Name Solution, we never have to have everyone at the table because this month, every August, we only ask in F, G, H, I, J, the Jacksons, the Johnson, the Joplins, the Jones, K, the Kemp's, the Kelly's, the Kings, to come together only in August and not again until February. That's it, that's it. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew why uh, this is such a big deal. And then next month, March, and again in September is last names S. Um, let me show you guys that. Next month is these last names right here, S. Let's clear that out, sorry about that. It's last names L, M, N, and O. So if your last name began with any of those alphabets next month in September, we're going to be concentrated on the Lanes, the Lesters, the Loves, the Loftons, the Mullins, the Muhammads, the Montgomerys, the Newmans, the Northfleets, anyone, and the Owens, last names L and O. What this gives us, you guys, is it gives us every single month predictability. We know who we can count on. And that's a really, really big deal. Really, really big deal. So to close out the, the roll call, because <laughs> that's what this was, I wanted to point that out. Let me read to you uh, the cities that we are linked to. Let me do that right here on the side. Let's get back up here. Let's get back up here to this month, the month we're in. Okay, here we go in August. So real quick, I'm going to point this out. Then we're going to move on to Mississippi. Can't wait to show you guys what we've done in Mississippi here. Okay, so over here, every one of these US cities is linked to a Chicago neighborhood. Gary is linked to Bronzeville. Atlanta is linked to Garfield Park. Detroit is linked to New City, St. Louis to South Austin, Milwaukee to Woodlawn, South Shore to Miami. We got Birmingham linked to North um, West Humboldt Park, New Orleans to Washington Park. Dallas to uh, Roseland, Memphis to North Austin, Kansas City linked to Calumet Heights in Chicago, St. Paul is linked to um, uh, Ashburn, Cleveland is linked to Washington Heights, LA is linked to North, uh, North Lawndale, uh, San Diego is linked to West Humboldt, West Garfield, uh, West Inglewood, Boston is linked to East Garfield Park, Philly linked to Chatham, DC linked to Marquette Park, Norfolk linked to Auburn Gresham, and New York City linked to Inglewood. All Chicago zip codes manages what we do all over this nation. And this month, all of these, these cities, these neighborhoods is where we're on tour at for the month, this month alone. That's it, you guys. I wanted to make sure I cleared that up. So we're at the 310 hour now. So let me move on to Mississippi. Let's change the screen here. Let's change the screen so you guys can see what we're doing in rural towns and major cities, rural towns and major cities. And the uh, purpose of rural towns is there's majority of black people are in the South, but there's a disconnect or we're not maximizing the relationships of blacks in the South and blacks in the North. And I think we can do a, a greater job uh, when we pull together. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can really, really see this here. And 
this here follows what I just kind of showed you, the system that I kind of just went over with you guys, which is twice a year, every six months, us concentrating on um, last names A through E and F through K. So as you can see right here, let me get my annotator up here. These are 60 towns in Mississippi. Why Mississippi? Because Mississippi... Sorry about that. Okay, good. Because Mississippi, you guys, is the largest state percentage-wise of black people in the U.S. No other city has more pe black people in it than Mississippi. So it is critical. <laughs> it's critical that black people know about the where our big brother is you know if you're getting bullied and whatnot you want to know where your big brother is right our big brother is in mississippi mississippi is also where your money goes the furthest statewide statewide in gary indiana your money goes furthest in the city but statewide is mississippi so these are the towns in mississippi that we specifically targeted because of many different factors. Number one, population of black people in these towns. So you got Fayette, Faraday, Floral, Forest, Friars Point, Grenada, Greenville, Greenwood, uh, Gulfport, Hattiesburg, Helena, Holly Grove, Jackson, and Coastal Coastal Co. No, I'm pronouncing that wrong. But this is where Oprah Winfrey was born, right here in this town, right here. Jackson is beautiful. Jackson reminds me of what Gary is coming going to become to, in, in my eyes, it's vibrant, it's majority black, and it, it had, you know, all type of business going on, tall buildings. So I see Jackson, Mississippi, uh, ja um, Jackson, Mississippi, and Gary, Indiana being, um, Gary getting ready to emulate what Jackson is doing already. So anyway, this is August. So these are the towns that we mailed out to. These are the towns we did surveillance in, research. We asked our people all over the nation who have family members here uh, in the Friars Point area. That's our sister, Governor Chastity from Chicago's Inglewood. Her family is the main family down there. So next month, which is September, remember, it's last names L, M, N, and O. So we're going to be focusing on L, Towns, M, <laughs> Towns, right here. That's, um, that's linked you know, for next month in September, because we know September is coming. So we're going to be focusing on these. And the main thing is with Mississippi, 9,000 black people to move back to Mississippi since the 2010 census. And those numbers hopefully going to keep increasing. We are 600,000 black people away from having a 50% state in America, a 50% state in America. That's a big deal, you guys, because no state. We're 37.6% now, Mississippi is. The next closest one is Louisiana at 32.9%. So just imagine what life is like for Blacks in anywhere in America when we got a state, not a city, a state where we're half the population. That means police force. That means county board. That means the hospital boards. It should represent that. <laughs> So my point is, this is going to be good for us to get 600,000 Black people to move to Mississippi before the 2030 census. It's doable. Mount Bayou, to me, is our, we, we should be excited about Mount Bayou, Mississippi. Let me bring the annotation up and let me draw on Mount Bayou. I want y'all to really, really see Mount Bayou because this is important to me for uh, what we're going to do as a people. Because Mount Bayou been all Black for a hundred in 33 years, Mount Bayou, Mount Bayou, 133 years, black municipality. No other city in America can claim that. This is historic right here, Mount Bayou, Mississippi. The mayor and I interviewed, I interviewed her, Eula Peterson, great woman. Last month in July, I made the trip to Mount Bayou, Mississippi, took my family as well. And the beauty is we went to the Pottery House, Google Pottery House, in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. And this is a black owned successful business. And we met one of the sisters, the family members, uh, Sister Brenda, I'm gonna bring her up next month so you guys can meet her. Uh, but she is open to the whole vision of what we're doing. Uh, and, and so that was good. We also got Sister Yakima 
who's working right now with us uh, and getting paid. So we're putting money into Mount Bayou right now to help us build out the people in each of these categories. So anyone right now in America, we're asking them to get ready. We're doing Nichols to Mississippi, Nichols to Mississippi. That's how we're going to finance this Nichols to Mississippi. And we just excited about that. So I got, uh, it's 317. I got one more minute. So, so just know this. I want to go to one more screen here before I uh, switch gears because I got to show you guys the money we raised real quick. Uh, so Mississippi, Nichols to Mississippi. I want you to see one more screen here before um, we move on. And that is right here. This is what it looks like next, next Wednesday, 4 to 5 o'clock. We might change that time there, but next Wednesday, we're going to have these Chicago superstars right here. All right. I'm going to go over just a minute because I can see the time is escaping me here. I'm going to go over just a second. You guys, I got to show you this. Now, look at this. Cheryl Blackman, that's Chicago Inglewood superstar. Ron Carter, Walter Collins, Evan Krebitz, Sarah Dunlap. They're going to be helping us with these towns in Mississippi right here. 16 towns, I think. Then we got Chastity. Wilbur Green, uh, Mr. Henderson, and Miss Hosier, she's a seamstress. They're going to help us right here with these black towns in Mississippi. Cy Lewis, Doris Lewis, Everloise McCullough, these are all our Chicago superstars. Brenda Nash, Grady Norwood, they're going to help us with these towns right here. Powerful, you guys. This is Chicago and Gary, Indiana people coming together to help us with the nickels to Mississippi to put money into Mississippi, preferably starting out with Mount Bayou, Mississippi. As you can see, we need, we need help with the P's, the Q's, and the R's. Sherry Parker is standing in the gap right now. We need help with the S, T, and U's. That's James, Shannon, Tracy, and Edward Tolliver. They're going to help us. And we don't have no one helping us with the V through Z in Mississippi. So we definitely need help with that. So just wanted you guys to see uh, that's the setup. But please know that when we think about the racism we're facing all over this country, it's like when a, a male is choosing a woman and he wants a woman that doesn't have a father in her life, don't have no one to protect her. It makes her easy prey. It makes her easy target because there's no ramifications for what he may do to that, 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 that uh, woman. Mississippi being the blackest state in the union, it makes sense to build up our big brothers so that we can know that other people would know that there's repercussions if they don't um, treat us the right way. So anyway, let's get ready because it's almost time for me to move on to safety. I got to show you the money real quick. Uh, we're going to go quick on that uh, so you guys can see what we did. And that's going to be a big deal for us because I want you guys to know like at the end of the day, the quicker we get this money rotating, we're going to be in better shape across the board. And I'm going to talk about why. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Okay. So this is July. We raised $420. $420 total for the whole month nationwide. 380 of that came from Chicago. So kudos to Chi-Town. But that's expected because that's where I'm born and raised. So I, I'm grateful to all our Chicago superstars. So as you can see here, the red indicates that we didn't get a penny. Now, we talk about Mississippi, so that's, that's nickels to Mississippi. So when you see nothing in there, that's like really, really bad because, I mean, we didn't get nothing from Mississippi. <laughs> so if nothing else, let's at least build out this national north and south america north north and south in america working together so uh austin we didn't get nothing west humble park we didn't get nothing this is only in july garfield park we didn't get nothing east garfield park nothing south austin north Lawndale. We got a hundred dollars out of bronzeville kudos to bronzeville new city we got nothing west inglewood we got nothing market park we got nothing ashburn we got nothing uh, and Arvin Gresham, we got $6, kudos. Inglewood, we got nothing. And Washington Park, we got $24. That two people did their 12s there. Woodlawn came through with $50, as you can see. Chatham came through with $24 there. Washington Heights, we didn't get nothing. Roseland came through with $22. Then we have uh, South Shore, we didn't get anything. And then Calumet Heights, we got 100 That's just in that month, you guys. If I let you, if I go to the month before that, this is what it looked like. Um, 
when we raised all together in June 200, we raised 397. And remember, $1 a month is what we go for at $12 a year. 202, we raised out of Chicago. As you can see, we had more success. Westside did more that month. <clears throat> um, and then we just, every month, we got these uh, reports that will show you how much we raised for each one of these categories. But I want to, before I switch gears, I want to show you guys what we did um, for the whole uh, nation. Now, it, it, yeah, for the whole country. I want to show you guys what we did there. Okay. Let's pull this up again. Here we go. Then we go jump right into violence. I knew it was going to be tight, you guys. This is real tough. I mean, it's, it's back, back to back to back. So here we go right here. This is how much we raised year to date. So let me zoom in so you guys can see that real quick. Okay, so we raised all together $2,959 from January 1st to now, to July 31st. We raised, it's more than that now from our August donors. So we are $1,000 away from beating last year's mark already, and we're still four months out. So kudos to you, but let's speed this up, you guys. More money in means we can grow more rapidly. So this is what each, let me zoom in a little bit higher. This is what each neighborhood has done year to date. So in the whole seven months of this year, we got twelve dollars from North Austin. All right, let me let me. Uh, in the whole year today, seven months, we got eighty-three dollars out of Humboldt Park. This whole year, we got seventy-one dollars out of Garfield Park. Twenty-four, as you can see here. This whole year, we got a hundred dollars out of Bronzeville. And this whole year, we got nothing out of South Austin, nothing out of New City. This whole year, that's uh, eight months, seven months. As you can see here, we got the most money citywide out of Auburn Gresham, $433. So that there right now, the reign and supreme, they're helping us go the furthest coming out of that zip code, uh, 60620. All right, so that's it. Um, four minutes over, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and switch gears here now and let's go over the sad part. And that's the violence, you guys. So we are switching gears here, okay. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this because this is always sad. This is always sad, but we got to talk about it. Got to talk about it, you guys. Here we go. Um, let's do this first. Let's do this first. I want you guys to see, before we go into details, I want you to see the broader picture of the violence and what we're dealing with. So let's paint that picture first before you guys see that. That's right here. All right, here we go right here. All right, so what you're looking at right here is, and we're welcoming Kendra straight out of Gary. Uh, so what you're looking at right here is the month of July. We had, as you can see here, 37 people shot, 13 killed. The next week, this is in seven days, we had 134 people shot, 21 killed. These are the cities. Chicago had 50 people shot, 40, I mean, four killed. As you can see, Birmingham had nine people shot, two killed. Just totally uh, unacceptable. Uh, then last week, we had 80 shot and 16 people killed. So those are the numbers right now. 264 people shot, 50 are dead, 50 people. These are black people who I track. 50 black people that are no longer with us, and it wasn't because of COVID. They was killed due to violence, whether it's stabbing, shooting, they was killed due to violence. It's unacceptable. I want to go into the numbers so you guys can see the details of that. That's the big picture, the broad picture. Welcome, Kendra. How are you, Queen? I'm fine. Can you hear me? I hear you well. I can hear you well. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through this violence, and then we... Um, I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about missing persons. I definitely want to get your thoughts on our missing persons and um, Gary. So can you see the screen, though? Okay. I can see the so, screen well. I'm muting the camera, uh, muting my mic on and off because I'm here with the yeah. grandbaby. No, no, no. So. I, know you I know you haven't blast, so I appreciate that. Be safe. Yeah, yeah just mute us for us, um, and I'll be patient when I call you up. 
Okay. All right, you guys. As you can see, August 16th was uh, a week ago, and we had 62 people shot, four killed in Chicago. As you can see, this uh, teen laying dead in, in on 3500 West on Flournoy. It's the west side of Chicago. As you can just see, triple shooting in, uh, on 814 in, in New Orleans. Um, Dallas woman shot to death at the motel. Man hit. That's on the same day. Uh, Cleveland, three people killed in one night. Three people killed in one night in Cleveland. Uh, triple shooting in 60621 on 67th and Sagamon. Uh, I just want people to see the big picture here, and we're going to talk about what we're going to do about it. Because there's one thing to uh, show you this, but it's a whole other thing. We talk about what we're going to do differently to do something about it. Big, big picture. Philadelphia is the second highest murder total in America right now. Philadelphia is. Philly is linked to Chicago's Chatham neighborhood. They had 247 murders as of August 11th. And that's second to guess who? Chicago. Chicago has 433 murders as of August 11th. So there's a 187 murder gap between the largest number of murders in one city and the second, which is Philly. Look at New York, 227 murders, unacceptable, but they 20 murders less than Philadelphia. We got work to do big time in Philly. Birmingham, right now, 75 murders that they have right now. Uh, as you look, um, Chicago team, uh, Carjack, uh, another triple shooting at 60621. Our brother Keith lost his son uh, due to this violence, and, and we keeping him lifted up in prayer. St. Louis, we got eight and nine year olds running around carjacking people the 11 year old boy shot to death in philly so i just want you guys to see this we keep this these records because what it does for us it allows us to uh, get the media reports once we hear who made statements about what happened we're able to track them down and win them over and get them on board to helping us to come together nationwide to turn this thing around so i just wanted to make sure you guys knew when we track this we are able to get in touch with the people who make statements in Philly, in New York, in Detroit, get to know them, get them on our Facebook, and then you end up sometimes seeing me doing Zooms with them so we can uh, come together around stopping it. Now, what is the solution? Let me stop sharing here. I want to look at you guys as I talk about what, what are we going to do about this? And we're getting ready to go into missing persons here. Okay, so HSN HSN stands for Habits, Schedule, and Network. At the end of the day, when you look at our community, what are the habits of our people? What are our habits? What do we do on a regular basis? What do we do without thinking about it? It's just habits. Because a lot of what we're dealing with violence-wise is lifestyle. It's, it's how we live our lives. Not all, but a lot of it is. Schedule. How do we use time? How do we use time? And we know some of our people are not making the best use of time. So if we give them a lot of stuff to do, that's going to have impact on how they use their time. They won't have time for certain things. If they're traveling to New York, Detroit, St. Louis, probably not going to have time to hang out all night. They got to get up and go. And then the last one is network. Who's in their life? Who's in their life? And when they pick up their phone, their Rolodex, no one uses that anymore. Who can they call? Who's in there? They get in the jam. Who can they call? Can they call judge such and such? Can they call a friend, police officer they went to school with? Who's in your network? And we have got to build this so they got habits, schedule, and network in their life so they can be the best them. Kendra, good to see you, Kendra. If you can come off mute right now, we're ready to move over to the next topic, Ken. We waiting on Kendra to um, take her phone off mute so she can uh, introduce herself and uh, let her know because her last name is Johnson, you guys, F through K. So she's perfect. Can you hear me yet, Kendra? <laughs> so while we wait on Kendra to come off mute, I'm missing persons. You. There I'm you go. Sorry. I'm trying to get away from the grandkids right now. <laughs> but uh, I'm good now step outside so, here for a minute because um, this is this has been like my third meeting for today um i was uh i was just on uh, black lives matter uh, they just had a black lives matter uh northwest indiana gary 
and they just had a, um, they were just talking about um, shootings in, in our communities in terms of involving the police. So I not too long have got off that, that call. So um, for anybody that doesn't know me and my kids joke, who don't? Uh, <laughs> my name is Kendra S. Johnson, and I have been an advocate for uh, 2016, I was recognized by the Indiana Civil Rights Commission MLK uh, Committee with an award that was created for the work I've done in my community, trying to be a voice for those who feel like they don't have a voice and who need help in terms of getting resources and speaking up and getting problems solved. Now, now Kendra, are you ashamed of where you come from? Uh, for those that don't know, I have spent uh, 20 years of my life living in public housing. And I am a lifelong resident of Gary, Indiana. What, what, no, and well, I, I, am definitely, I am definitely not ashamed of my city, Gary, Indiana, nor what, am I ashamed of living in pub, public housing. We've had what, some fantastic in Gary, Indiana, we've had some notable people yeah. that came out of public housing. Not what what no that I was gonna say, I grew up, I claimed two projects, Cabrini Green and Jane Adams. And I tell people I'm a project kid because I grew up, <laughs> I spent majority of my time in the projects too. But I love to dispel that notion that the project people can't make it. Uh, so I always like bringing that up, especially when I got a fellow project person uh, that I'm talking to. My wife gets mad when I uh, call her project person too. She grew up in the projects as well. <laughs> People, you from the hood, just don't be a hood rat. There you go, there you go. So right now we are searching for uh, the Shwanda Glover in Gary, Indiana. Uh, actually it was Griffin, Indiana, right outside of Gary, Indiana. And uh, for those who don't know, we still are looking for our uh, uh, King and Diamond, which have been missing since July 2015. So we still got our eyes open. But you're you're from Gary. You know Gary. You move around Gary. It's certain places when a person come up missing. It's certain places that you immediately go and look, like where people hang out at. Then it's certain places where you don't have to look because you know they'll call the police if they see anything suspicious. In, in your mind, where could a person be wandering at in Gary, Indiana? Well, one of the things um, I can say when it comes to Gary, one of the biggest places that um, get called where you have police called is our public housing complexes to the point where people will say, um, you know, you don't want to go there because, you know, it's the quote unquote projects and things happen. But there's also, um, and there's different areas where people, uh, you, you know that the crime is not high um, in our city. Um, but one of our biggest problems that we have one of the biggest problems we have in our city um, is the fact that we have a lot of abandoned units and that's a high concern for us abandoned units and closed schools and there have been a couple of there have been a couple of cases where there were bodies uh two cases where a body was found in two different schools. And because of that issue, our mayor has tried to hold the state, who is over our school corporation now, accountable. He's demanded that they do something about it or he legally will. And it has um, 
to a certain extent that has caused them to take action. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that's one I've of our seen, biggest concerns. I, the fact that the we've plan. got these yeah. abandoned structures. Yeah. Now, now, now I see the grandkids that followed you outside. Um, so that's a good thing. <laughs> they, they well, back. one of them went back in. They didn't went back in. Now I think they just, I think they just want to be seen. That's all. <laughs> well, they, 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 they come and wear his love at. But, but here, going back to the missing persons, though, this is what I want everyone to know around the country that we have to be a little bit more nosy as a people. And it's, it's a way mm -hmm. to be nosy with love and, and, of course, safety first always. But there are young girls being trafficked right now. There's 60,000 black women missing around this country. And if we do mind our own business like we tend to do, that helps those, those traffickers get away with trafficking people. So uh, what do you say to that about um, if a person is missing and how we help? Well, being that? someone that has, being someone that has walked all over my city and at times at night and by myself, one of the things I do tell individuals is to make sure that you let someone know where you're going. That's um, that's one thing. Don't say you're going one place and then you're going someplace else. You know, some of our children have a habit of that. Well, I'm going over such and such house when you're really going over yeah. a boy's house or a girl's house. You know, let it, let your parents or someone know where you are going. Right. So that if you don't reach a certain place by a certain time, certain actions can be taken can take be taken place. So, Right. You know, some they tell you that a person um, has to be missing for 24 hours an adult. You know, don't wait. Sometimes don't wait on the police. If a certain person hasn't gotten to a certain right. uh, location and you family, go look for them. Right. Go no, look no for doubt. them. That is key. Yeah. You know, another thing, stay on the avenue. Don't don't cut an alley. Stay on a some place where there's traffic going back and forth, because these people that want to grab you, kidnap you, they will look for you to be on some place where there's not a lot of traffic. Right. So they can snatch and go. Right. Yeah. You know, make sure you have a phone with you and it's charged, and and make sure you are aware of your surroundings. That was one of the things I taught my children when we would walk together. I would get, I'd say, okay, be real, real quiet. What do you hear? You know, one of them would say, I hear a bird or I hear the wind or, and I did that so they would know, be aware of your surroundings, be aware, you know, look around, don't get distracted. Sometimes we put earphones in our ears and we're listening to music and we're not watching what's going on around us. Yep. Um, I would I would put one earphone in my ear and leave the other one off so I could still hear. Right. But yeah. you know th these are all safety measures that you have to take. Cause sometimes you know maybe somebody was supposed to pick you up and the car breaks down. You know, and you may have to walk or you right. may in some cases run. Um, and I'm right. very serious. Like I said, being someone who has walk this city many a times at night um you know you have to be very careful i always try to carry walk with a stick like the old prophets uh DS. Nah, that's right you know you know walk with a stick so you be able uh one time i was attached and i had a screwdriver in my pocket and when the person went for me I took the screwdriver and I went to town, you know, and, and the person did let me go. And he was in a vehicle. Let now, me go and he drove off. Now, now that, but, that's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's toughness on your part, Kendra. We talking about safety right now and our young people, you had a tragedy happen to you and you're still helping people despite the tragedy. Uh, fire safety is a big part of every Monday being safety day. We want people to check their smoke alarms, have an escape route just in case the family know. What can you speak about on fire safety uh, for a couple minutes? Okay, say that question again. 
you have any any input on fire safety what people can do to make sure that they're safe from uh the tragedy that could happen with a fire um well many people uh may be aware my i've been the victim of two fires one was a one i was fired my home was firebombed by some wannabe gang members um and we got out safely the other time uh i had a fire at my home and i lost my uh grandson and so now i'm a huge advocate of fire safety and number one make sure your smoke alarms are working you know we have a tendency that when we're cooking we want to turn the smoke alarm off because it keeps going off you know but make sure that smoke alarm is on it can save your life um some places have electrical smoke alarms get a get a battery operated one as well because sometimes when the when there's a fire the electricity will cut off and the smoke alarm may not go off um so make sure you have battery operated ones and that and uh make sure that make sure that also um like i said make sure there's smoke alarm make sure there's battery and smoke alarm and if you can have a fire extinguisher you know i i have been a proponent now of trying to get the housing authority to have to have a smoke alarm uh, to have fire extinguishers in their units because if i had one it would have things would have been different well, now, so let, let's uh let's get you to mute now kendra uh you please stay on with us if you can i gotta move the conversation over we're at the 340 mark so i want to go into the economic agenda uh so what you guys are about to look at is dealing with money uh black people we're a trillion dollar economy you guys a trillion dollar economy we are we have money we have money other ethnic groups wouldn't be in black neighborhoods if we didn't have money you guys so please know we have money every time i hear us say we don't have money i think about a, a child that just keeps blowing their allowance that you're giving them <laughs> not realizing the power that they have in terms of the dollars you're giving them we have money the arab gas stations the liquor stores wouldn't be in black neighborhoods if we didn't have money so what you're looking at right here if you guys can see this screen here name your four campaign name your four campaign what what is this what this is and it looks like you guys can't see it here let me see why you guys can't see this okay there you go okay you can see it now and i just erased it okay let's get it back here the name your four is what i'm about to pull up so you guys can see that and we're going to talk about why this matters so much there's four wednesdays each month four wednesdays each month we ask that every wednesday black people agree to focus on economics every wednesday focus on economics why wednesday because the other six days we're asking our people to focus on a different matter that helps you out personally every saturday is youth day you see kendra johnson right there with what young people what happens all over the black america with 44 million of us are synchronizing behavior is going to cause us to see some massive unity and on saturdays our youth are going to have all these adult love coming their way when we take kids out of town it's always been saturdays that they have fun in detroit in st louis in new york but wednesday we want to focus on financial literacy wednesday we want to focus on making sure that our people know where the black businesses are in your zip code in your city and what you're looking at right here, I'm gonna draw now. <laughs> I'm gonna go here so I can draw. Uh, this here is what we've asked Cahoma, Cahoma, Mississippi to focus on. Cahoma, Mississippi. It's called the Name Your Four campaign. Name Your Four. And what this is, uh, I'm sorry, it's Metcalf, Mississippi, not Cahoma. It's Metcalf, Mississippi. It's 97% black. So like all the people we're gonna hire out of Metcalf 
97% of them are black. It's about a thousand people in Metcalf. Their job to me is to let me know how many of you guys fill out this form right here. Metcalf, Mississippi, uh, uh, we're asking them to be responsible for filling out or getting filled out 40 million of these from 40 million black people. We want to hopefully encourage us to be able to name four black businesses. That's one. It's two. It's three. It's four. That's at least four, minimum. Chinatown, Greek Town, Little Italy, they can name 20. We saying, can we name just four? <laughs> like that's the minimum. We just asking, can we do that? And this is how we saying help. Like this, you don't have to follow the same format, but we spend money on hair products. Whether it's barbers, whether it's beauticians or just the products itself, that can be one. Buy that from a black person. We spend money on health stuff, whether it's health products or alkaline water. That can be one of the blacks you spend money with. We spend money on our car. Whether it's a mechanic, whether it's getting tires, I know we lose in tire shops to non-black owned, but that can be one. We spend money on our home, whether it's home repairs, whether it's apparel, whether it's toilet tissue, soap. This is where our black people, our entrepreneurs are at. They sell us soap and tissue. Let's, let's support that. Then you can name your four. It's four Wednesdays. If you do the, the division, that's 25, 25, 25, 25. So 25%, I joke and say, if you can't name four, you're not 100% black. If you name three, you're 75% black. If you can name two, you're 50% black. If you name one, you're quarter black. If you can't name none, what's your commitment to black people? Because each of our black entrepreneurs and business people have taken risks. And if we won't reward them with at least one we saying one <laughs> out the whole week four out the whole month uh so welcome uh i see our superstar poet vanessa how are you okay that, groceries okay. we spend money on groceries we spend money on restaurants so please just find a black one of these um pet store coming out of gary all pet supplies gary our brother gary and Gary, so if you guys have pets and you go into Petco and all of them, we got a black brother, took a risk, opened up a black pet store in Gary right there at 39th and Broadway having this event today. So again, this is personal. Name your four is personal. I honestly believe that when black people commit to this, it's going to change our neighborhood. And here's why. When you hear people say, buy black, that's a statement. That's a statement. Buy black. Cool, cool. All right. When I asked you, Vanessa, can you name four black businesses you did business with in July last month? That's a question. Now, with a question, you could choose to ignore me, but most likely people answer. And when you answer, oh, man, I can't name four. It's cool. Let's name four this month. Because when we start questioning each other positively with love, we're holding ourselves accountable. That's why Name Your Four coming out of Metcalf, Mississippi is so important. Right now, we got a teenage book author selling books. We should be, we could be buying them books and we get to name her as one out of four. So many of our black people done music. Uh, Vanessa, you got poetry for sale. We can buy that. That's supporting the black business. You get to name them as one of your four. Print black companies, lounges, clowns, parties, anything we're saying, can you name four? Uh, Vanessa, what do you think about that? Um, I think... I think that is awesome. Um, I was trying to think of four. And so I've been, since the pandemic started, I've been like doing a lot of shopping on Amazon. So I haven't been, I don't know, but if, if I could find me some, you know, black places to shop online, I can definitely switch and then I'll be able to name my four. Well, well, thank you for your honesty. And, and here's the beauty. We got uh, a place and, and I should have brought it up on the web. I'm a part of it, but it's a black version of Amazon and Mike Perkins is our superstar with it. Uh, but it's a, a, a space, a marketplace space where everyone can go there and, and buy black. And uh, we want to make sure that we promote that. So I'm going a, I'm to a look it up and I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to share it before the video is out. But I can talk it up. It is a black version of Amazon with black products you can order online. But uh, even if you don't order online, Vanessa, it's still like alkaline water. Um, that that's on 71st Street. 
uh, at um, uh, 71st and Stewart, that area there. You know, if someone do your hair, that's still something you got to physically do. So we just, again, want to encourage our people to carve out. And it, we're not asking how much, even if it's just a couple of dollars. Are we circulating money with our own? That's all. Um, Kendra, did you have input on that name you're for, Kendra? Um, yes, believe it or not, I do have input on that. Um, one of the one of our black owned businesses that has been a, a staple in our city is Coney Island. Um, it's located on 25th and Grant, uh, I'm sorry, 25th Broadway. and Broadway. <laughs> yeah. And my biggest thing is whoever has a business, you know, try and promote it sometimes um, and then try to patronize it. Um, I know that, that we've had several businesses that have opened in our city. There's another one. Uh, on Fifth and Broadway, um, that had, that serves sandwiches. It's called Food Express, owned by a minority, uh, by a black couple, and um, the food is very good. <laughs> you know, I, and I can name some. I can name some black-owned businesses that we have. Uh, another staple in our city that has been here for decades. Uh, Phyllis Fabrics. It's a fabric store where you can buy fabrics. No doubt. You know, people yeah. are making math. Uh, well, she sells fabrics. Yeah. She's located um, right off of 22nd and Broadway. Yep. So, you know, so when you, when you know that there are Black-owned businesses, we need to promote them. We need to go and visit them. I mean, even when it comes to the restaurant, uh, you know, like I mentioned, Food Express. If you don't have a lot of money, at least go in and buy a juice, buy a pop, yeah. uh, buy a pop, buy a bag of potato chips, something to show hi. We we know you're here. You know, we want to patronize you. And then, secondly, black businesses. If you want to have customers, you got to be customer service yeah. oriented. Big time. Yeah. And, and, and thank you for that. Those are all great points. Um, and, and what we're doing with the businesses every Wednesday, we created a zoom for the different types of black businesses. So we're working with the barbers on a certain Wednesday. We are working with the um, uh, entrepreneurs on a certain Wednesday, but all four Wednesdays, there's about 64 different industries of black businesses that we're working with. And that's allowing us to have development conversations because some of our businesses we got a roofer that the way he did the roof wasn't cool with the homeowner so that's a wednesday conversation when we dealing with all of our carpenters bricklayers and plumbers and stuff like that so it's almost like our own version of the better business bureau but it's a black version that allow us to help our, our business owners be um, better at what they do so that i just wanted to put that out there so you guys can know that as well um, so let me uh, get ready. I got one thing to show. Then we, we got to switch gears to uh, construction because this is a big deal. It's, it's sort of like I just gave us an entryway into the construction conversation. But I think it's important that we talk about, um, I wanted to show you guys some of the black businesses, but it still haven't come up yet. So I move on to construction. So here's the deal. We have in, in, in Gary, Indiana, it's, it's shameful. Gary is almost nine out of 10 people in Gary, Indiana is black. But yet and still, when you look at the construction happening, you see not nine out of 10 people black working on the construction. You got other ethnic groups who literally come in, make the money, and then go back to their neighborhood. This happens in every city that I've been to where you got the people who fled the urban sector in the 1960s and 70s, started their private companies because they, they also got their pensions, started their private companies. And because they worked for the government back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, now because they started their they private companies, now they contract with the city. So continued exclusion of Black people who can't even work in their own city 
because these people who fled now because they had a relationships, equipment, contracts, they come right back in to do the work. Well, guess what? Those days are limited. Those days are numbered because we're getting smarter. We're using technology. So what we're doing every fourth Monday, we are connecting with carpenters, bricklayers, plumbers, welders, roofers, um, um, auto mechanics, seamstress. They're not construction, but they all work with their hands in a skilled trade. And we're bringing all of them together in Gary, in Chicago, in Atlanta, in Miami, Birmingham, and New Orleans. So they at least can know each other starts there and once they know each other then we start working on how to help be there for each other some people need tools some people need to pull money together so they can get a certain license and that's what we're doing right now so the day is coming when nationwide we're going to be able to bring our construction people together uh vanessa or kendra you guys have any feedback on that i know both of y'all on mute now Okay. I guess that means it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yes, I like that. Mm. Excellent. Now, now I'm going to tell y'all right now, I have a van that needs some work out here in Trump country, rural Georgia. And my wife was able to track down a black uh, um, person to work on the van. But what I thought of, think about this. Wouldn't it be nice if we knew that we was getting ready to graduate the next class of auto mechanics. They was getting ready to graduate next month. And, and they've been in so much months of training. And we know we are getting ready to have a new crop of young auto mechanics who's not going to charge all these exuberant fees because they don't need all that money like our people that tend to be in the craft now. And so you're going to get cheaper prices, a little bit less experience, but we're helping them gain experience. Won't that feel good, y'all? I said, man, that'll be good. Here's the next crop of mechanics being birthed, being graduated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So we uh we at the four o'clock hour. So it's time to move on to education. And these two people that we have Ooh. already on here, last names begin with J, is uh, already in this arena, in this world. <laughs> So, before I bring them up for their expertise, I want you Sorry. guys to look at something. What was that? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Kendra. I wanted to make a quick comment, really. Uh, of course. The, house, the Housing Authority just had a meeting where they were trying to award a bid for construction. And... and they didn't have a lot of uh, people come on and bid. And it was sad because it was a big project. And they mentioned at the meeting that they didn't have, they were disappointed at how many people came out to bid. And, and, well, well, real quick on that though, it's like this. And I thought about that with the young mechanics, right? That, that this crop of mechanics. If we don't give them enough business, guess what they go do? They go find something else to do. But like, why would they sit here and not make ends meet because they want to be a mechanic and we're not giving them uh, bandwidth to do it? If we don't give black people construction jobs, why buy the equipment? Why go finance equipment and they don't have no jobs? So it's a catch-22 for our uh, construction, black construction people, which is why we had to create this national team. So in the in the South, they might buy the equipment. In the North, they get the contracts. Makes sense, right? <laughs> so the point is, they can feed off each other. They get they work together instead of one buy. I mean, they all buy the equipment. They don't have the contracts now. Everybody is in trouble. They got to pay their creditors. They don't have the contracts. So. If we do it the right way, we can take all four parts of the nation and each one can do something to help each other out. And that's what we go do. Y'all ready to switch gears? It's four o'clock here. <laughs> yes, let's switch. Education, let's switch. education, education. So here we go. I'm excited to show you guys this. Um, we have started here in Georgia school already. I'm not sure if it kicked off yet in Gary and Chicago yet. Has it? 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we okay. are in session. We are in school, but it's e-learning. That, that, hey, I, I ain't mad at okay. that. I'm, I'm about to show you guys why I'm not mad at that because of what you're looking at right here. Let's go to fourth grade to start out with, y'all. Let's go to fourth grade. <laughs> and I'm, I, I just... I, I want y'all to be excited with me, but we'll see if y'all get excited. Let me blow this up so y'all can see this. All right. Can y'all see that? Yes. <laughs> so every grade university every grade kindergarten all the way to 12th grade university this is from august to may for some people it'd be september to june it's okay but it's every month what the expectations could be for that grade and i want y'all to give me y'all let me go through it and i want y'all to dissect this vanessa you're a school teacher you chopped it up beat me up over it it's all good because we want to walk away with a product that our people can really use. So again, this is all about fourth graders here. So right here, reading. What is the expectations when they first come back? I put this down here. We want them to read a book and do a book report. So right on the onset, we can see where they at with comprehension. History, uh, study the Declaration of Independence. Also write about that. We wanna make sure they read it, then they can articulate what they read. Uh, for math, they should start making sure that they can do this two-digit borrowing and subtracting, physical science, life science, space science. As you can see, for every month, a different set of uh, reading, math, science, and history that they do. And these are the Mississippi towns that we want them to learn about early, early, all inside Mississippi, so that way they can learn the largest Black state for Black people. What do y'all think about that? Hmm, let me see. So I'm looking at it now. Okay, so my question is, is this, these are expectations that you saying nationally we want to have, meaning like, okay, their district might have certain expectations from them, but so who whose expectations are these? Perfect, perfect. That that's 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 the perfect question. These are the black people expectations. <laughs> So look here at the bottom. If uh, you okay, see so. the box here, <laughs> so you see this 40, 51st to 54th Calumet, King Drive, Vincennes, and Forestville. Yes. What we're asking the people who live on these blocks to do, we want Calumet to help us with fourth grade reading, King Drive fourth grade um, okay. um, history, Vincennes fourth grade math. And what we want to do is invite every fourth grader with a set date to come on these blocks and compete on the subject matter you see right there and try to win and beat the other fourth graders out. Okay. And they will be competing against somebody from a different block or just they just on the people on their block. No, the whole city coming over there. So North Lundell got a day to come over there. Another day, Inglewood coming over there. Another day, Chatham coming over there. So this area is the university. That's what I meant by university. So this is where all fourth graders around the city come to to compete and reinforce their knowledge and skill set. Okay. I see history of women's suffrage, study Barack Obama, Montgomery, okay, common multiples. Okay, yeah, I like it. I think it's a good start. Um, now, but, but Vanessa, I don't know if you see the yeah. real play. And Kendra, I'm going to bring Gary in in a minute, but here's the real play. What we're doing here is we're saying we're going to care about education other than relying on the school district. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So as you can yeah. see here, this third grade is here. This, 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 this second grade is here. So like the key is every grade, we want the grade above them to come back and help. So fourth graders come help the third graders. Second graders come help the first graders. So now we take back our blocks with vibrancy because all these people come in and they come in with uh, acquiring and sharing skills mm -hmm. 
which justifies us kind of changing the block, you know? So now instead of being desolate, you worried about walking. Now you got vans of parents out there and they bring in vibrancy to an environment where the criminals not going to like that because there's too much activity. <laughs> what do y'all think? Right. Yep. I think this is good. Absolutely. And I like the, I like the mentoring aspect because that gets kids involved and gives them a purpose because like we know a lot of the, like the criminals that you're talking about, they were lacking or are lacking purpose. So the earlier and more consistent we can give the kids purpose, then yep. they will be on the right track. Um, and what's the, the YG, what does that stand for? Y G B W and B S. Um, we'll talk about that. That'll open up a whole can of worms. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Just know that that's a code. We use that. Uh, that's a secret code that I'll tell you later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so the last thing on this, then I want to go to yep, Gary this with this. And also in no, go ahead, Vanessa. Yeah, so I was going to say that the other thing that this does is it, even though we, we're taking the education into our own hands, it helps the kids when they go back to school. So it helps, it helps the teachers. So it reinforces what the teacher is already doing, what they're teaching. It helps the parent because a lot of times the parent might not know how to do the work. So it helps all the way around. You, 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 you sing and that's exactly what, because I know what I had to do at third grade math with Mariah. I had to go and Google a few things and remember. And, and so I, I know the parents can use some yeah. layers of support with this. And that's what this does. And guess what? There's a Zoom ID for every grade. Every grade got its own Zoom ID so that they can have their own Zoom with tutoring and helping each other out. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, and how often would the meeting be like a once a month Zoom meet? So let me go to the annotation so I can show you that. And and this this where that uh, code come in. That's so you go force me to tell you. It happens at two o'clock every first Wednesday of the month. And this is just for eighth graders. This is just for eighth graders here. Welcome. Every grade. Now I know that's not enough because that's the immediate argument. That's not enough. But the main thing is at least we know that we checking in once a month with all the grades once a month they got their own date but that don't preclude them from working off our grid with each other so once we do the introduction once this parent which i've seen this work now where we introduce the second grade parent to another second grade parent and they lived in the same neighborhood didn't know now mm -hmm. they they helping each other out so we're not taking full responsibility of all this education we're not a school but we making the links, the connections, and then at least every 30 days, we trying to do some competitions and make sure that they're excited about it. Yes, that's good. So, Siron, why is it at two o'clock? And is this during the school year? <laughs> that's a school teacher for you. Very good, very good, very good. All right, so this is more administration, right? So, of course, with the school year and whatnot, we'll break it down and probably do it six, four o'clock, whatever. So the, the locals can decide that. But this is when these people report to headquarters about how this whole thing is going every first Wednesday at two. But it's that whole day that they're on report, if you will, to make sure that this eighth grader thing is going well, fourth grader thing is going well. So yeah, the time is flexible for the physical, but administratively, that is a set time. Great question. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, great question. So Kendra, just so you know, you've been hearing me talk to Vanessa really about Chicago, but just so you know, this exact same setup is already in Gary, Indiana, where we took 200, uh, 202 blocks and we've given every single one of them 220 blocks one focus, whether it's education with fifth grade, I mean, reading with fifth graders, math for fifth graders, history for fifth graders. And this, again, it allows us to justify all this vibrancy coming to the block to change any negative elements, to make it fun for the kids to compete and to come together all over the city. So what do you think, uh, Kendra Johnson out of Gary? 
Uh, it looks like a great idea, but one of the things I would definitely um, recommend because of the fact that, you know, there's always rumors and, and uh, uh, miscommunication that kids can't get along from different areas, but they can. Uh, but, you know, media loves to promote bad and, and, and then 99% bad and 1% good. But um, it looks good. One of the other things I would definitely include is the fact that when we do this to make sure that the curriculum in some kind of way or another is Afrocentric. You know, if we're talking about history, let's talk about history with little known facts that you don't hear in school. Um, you know, because one of the biggest things that just came out, the uh, the Watchmen uh, series that was on TV uh, became controversial because the superhero they focused on was a survivor of the uh, destruction of Black Wall Street. And right after that episode aired, there were a lot of people that commented on YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere else. I never, I didn't know this even happened. I never knew this happened. We weren't taught this in school. So, you know, um, so, you know, and like when we talk about math, make sure we mention great African-American mathematicians, uh, architects, you know, different people that use math while we're talking about math, you know, little side notes as well. Yes, awesome points. Siren, you're muted. Okay. Now, I was saying, my cousin Rondi, uh, she created Black School, and this has been, I mean, I've been watching her teach Mariah and some of the youngsters over the summer, and grown-ups need to attend this. Like, it teaches Africa during this beautiful heyday, uh, and it's something that we all can learn from. So you better believe the curriculum is going to tell the, the, the fullness, not the uh, supremacist perspective, uh, <laughs> Kendra. You better believe that. So yeah, so I just wanted you guys to take a peek at these. Um, so these are the different um, ones. And then I wanna go to talk about the awards and the money because that's a big deal for us is uh, letting these children win money. Like I believe uh, when you do that, you help the household out. A lot of our people may be struggling economically. So for a kid to win $100, $80, $60, $40, $40 I mean, that not only do they take away them at a grown age saying, I never won nothing in my life. Hey, you won something at fifth grade. <laughs> but it also allows the household to, to uh, have some tangible resources. And then it, it really, for us, it just helps us know where our $1 a month is going. It's going to provide incentives to our young people to compete, be excellent, and uh, get a little reward for it. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I love that for the reasons that you named. So they can have something, give them an incentive, get them excited. And, you know, education for um, some people is boring. Like a lot of time they feel like it's boring and they might, it just might, you know, maybe they haven't seen nothing that interests them yet in terms of the knowledge, <laughs> but money, money talks. So yes, <laughs> I, think this, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I think it's a great idea too, because you're kind of, um, you're kind of emphasizing what society claims that they're teaching us. If you want something, work for it. So if they take the, if they 
you know, it, it's kind of like a job. They're getting paid, <laughs> quote unquote. You know, uh, one of the Gary schools did that. We used to have literacy contests where the kids would read a book. And after they would read the book, there would be a contest and they would ask questions. And the person, every time they answered the correct uh, question correctly, they got a dollar. So, and my that really caused my son to want to read books. Then it, it, it's you a know. big deal. <laughs> you know, it's that a cracked big me. Deal. So yeah, he didn't like to read, but he made sure that he read though when he when it came to that. Yeah. So the 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 other thing that I didn't mention, you guys, is I watched a guy because we've been doing this a while. I watched a guy who others would say a game banger. He a street tribe member. And I, I knew he didn't know the um, the um, algebra six plus uh, B, A, whatever. And because we made the sign, the yard sign up, and because it was right in front of his house, I watched him over a, a small period of time. He, he knew what the answer was, that he started explaining it to the kids when they came to compete and win the money. He didn't even know a month ago, but now he out there because of repetition, he felt good. And what I'm saying to you guys, we put we put twenty or thirty dollars in his pocket, and he felt so good. So what I'm saying to you guys is the bottom line: this helps the community. He felt emboldened and empowered because he was needed, uh, and, and he checked out. He wasn't a sex offender, y'all. So, <laughs> but it was his block. But he felt value, is what I'm saying, and and it just allowed us again to circulate the money to the young people and to, in that case, him as a uh, worker. Yeah, awesome. All right. So, um that that so on the last end with the education piece, every Tuesday is our education day every Tuesday. So what what that boils down to is every Tuesday we do sort of a um you know, someone just shout out what they did on education. I looked up three words with with four syllables so that way I increase my vocabulary. You help the person with FAFSA. You did what, like, what did we as a black people from coast to coast do to get stronger, you know, with skill set and academia every Tuesday? Any thoughts on that, you guys? Okay. So the last thing on education, then it's time for us to uh, switch gears. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee is uh, near where I am in North Georgia. It's not that far away. And they have a public housing complex called East Lake Courts. And it sits right off the expressway. And it's 500 units of housing. So it's sprawling. And when I see that, I get excited <laughs> because I come from the project. So I know that opportunity is limited in this environment. And what I'm saying to you guys, we know that we got that we give away about $300 a month in these awards all over. The goal is to have $300 for every city. So that way we're not splitting $300. Like I think Gary, two people won $40 out of Gary. Chicago always wins majority because that's where majority of the donations come from. But so I already know for this Chattanooga complex, we're going to be able to recruit them from Chattanooga housing complex. If we budget this $300 for just Chattanooga alone, we know those young people are going to love it because that's a lot of money to play around from K through 12th grade with academic awards. And think about Dory Miller, public housing in Gary, Indiana, competing against public housing in East Lake Chattanooga. And this $300, we just take 100 from each budget. And now they plan and compete for $200 academics. Fifth grade, Dory Miller, fifth grade, East Lake, go at it. Fourth grade, Dory Miller, fourth, like, isn't that exciting? Just just me hearing that is exciting. What do y'all think about that? Well, you know, I think that would be exciting. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to change which uh, developments <laughs> are going to be competing because as of this week, yeah. we got the notification that Dory Miller will be cleared out by December of this year. So, but we do still have three other 
complexes left um, that could participate in that three family complexes left that could participate in that. And, 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 and Kendra, I was just using that because of I saw I think Dory Miller has how many units? Because this was five hundred in Chattanooga. Now Delaney was the one that had like five hundred. We we got like maybe I think we had like two hundred and seventy six, okay. if I'm not mistaken, was yeah. ours. So so but but I was just using that just to be just match it, right? But it's for the whole city of Gary. So it's not just for public housing. I was just using that because Chattanooga is gonna be new. And so that's an easy way to recruit people. Like going into that public housing, you got money to compete and win. You they let you in. Right, they go, they're gonna let you in. And we got Rosita on here. Rosita is our superstar out of Chicago, uh, the east side of Chicago. And Kendra, you got to meet Rosita, Vanessa, you as well, because this sister takes the young people to college tours. I was here in Georgia and they came in and, and they was going on campus all down there in the ATL. And you should just sort of look on the children's face being among leadership where you could tell they got love and able to be a kid and release and have fun. And at the same time, be interacting with uh, high college kids. It was just a beautiful sight. And Rosita is doing her own piece now. So we definitely going to fundraise and help support what, what she's doing on that. Um, any anything else, you guys? We got to switch to hunger here. No, that's it for me. Excellent, excellent. All right, cool beans. All right, so the, uh, we call it, uh, and just so y'all know, all things dealing with education is team four, team number four, team number four out of eight. Team number four is education. So y'all are team four members. Uh, Team number uh, seven is hunger. And that's what we're about to talk about now, team seven. So team seven is everything we put in our stomach, you guys, everything that we eat. And there are some companies out here that literally are working with state legislatures to criminalize you growing your own food. There are companies out here that's making laws that's going undetected to criminalize people farming and growing their own products. They locked up someone in Florida for growing products uh, in his front yard. Uh, and, and maybe they, he said he couldn't grow it in the backyard because the sun only shines on his front yard. But the point is these companies that now is taking over rural farmers and now they got corporate interests is a problem and a threat to our food, um, food chain. Um, and so before I go deep, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Were you guys even aware that these these companies are out here trying to control the food supply? I was not aware. And that's surprising that they would want to, I mean, that's crazy. That's true. That's crazy that they want to monopolize on every food. <laughs> no, I was, I was not aware and that's very surprising obviously wrong and like uh, in every imagination right every ethically you name it so yeah <laughs> what about you kendra you knew huh, welcome to the new world order um you know it's amazing people these corporations and entities will do what they believe they can get away with okay. now you know, personally, if they had been me, um, I would have been trying to attack on several levels. Attack number one, because of, uh, I have a cultural barrier since I am, since um, I'm Judeo-Christian, I don't eat pork. So now you're trying to tell me I can't grow food that will sustain me so you're endangering my life, right? And because you can't guarantee me yeah. that the food you're trying to provide me with is totally healthy. Right. I mean, one of my favorite, one of my favorite commercials is Breyer's commercial, you know, where they had a little kid trying to read the ingredients of the competitor's ice cream and he can't pronounce it, you know, and, and that always struck a chord with me because 
what what do we know that they putting in the food? You know, so that would have probably been my counter defense. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. can so you want to tell me I can't grow my own food to take care of myself, but are you telling me everything, every chemical you using in the food, you trying to make me buy from you? Right, right. So, so this is one of the pillars of, I think, what's going to create a lot of jobs for black people. I believe it's, it's two things, it's four things all together that's going to create a lot of jobs for black people. Number one, agriculture. I believe that we start growing our own food in the South. It's going to create a lot of jobs because of the weather, because of the soil. I believe in Mississippi, as a matter of fact, the northwestern part of Mississippi can become the National Agricultural Center. And that don't take away from black agriculture in Alabama and Arkansas, but Mississippi being a base. I believe the second thing is black manufacturing. My wife, Jamika, does reupholstering of furniture. Uh, our mm -hmm. vision is to make sure that we literally get old furniture from all over the country. We train the young girls on how to reupholster it, and then we get it right back out there for sale. And then they make the money off of that. So manufacturing with that as a guarantee, because it's working now, so that's part of black manufacturing. And then we need a national training pool. I mean, a national talent pool. So that way our brothers and sisters who are in Northern states can come down Mississippi into this national talent pool, gain skills, and then get redeployed in a different place throughout the country to work and make money and provide for their family. And again, that's the Southeast part. I mean, the Southwest part of, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, I mean, Jackson, Mississippi, that area that's going to be our national uh, talent pool. And then we got Mount Bayou, the northwest part of Mississippi, our national agriculture. Now we got justification for black truck drivers moving our products agriculturally between Mississippi and the nation, black manufacturing, all the furniture from Mississippi. You see what I'm saying? So now we got black trucks out there. We got black drivers. We got agriculture. We got manufacturing. We got the talent pool. Come on, y'all. We could put 100,000 people to work, us, <laughs> and no one should be mad at that. Chinatown, Greek town, Little Italy, nothing wrong with blacks doing for self. That's a good thing for society. What do you guys think about that? Yes, that's awesome. Um, what city, what city was, um, what city are they keeping people from growing their own stuff? Florida, Florida. What city? Yeah, Florida. Florida? Where the state. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a state law. Yeah, but it's not just them. They got maybe 20 countries, I mean, 20 state legislatures around the nation that they've already, Monastanto is one of the companies. Um, it's another one too, but they're agrochemicals. So they're using these chemicals so they can grow and preserve it longer. And those chemicals are causing us bodily harm. And they also, some of these same people are into the whole cancer research. So they're making money on that end too. So it's one of them attacks that we got to, again, we got to produce for ourselves versus trusting them. But is it, okay, so is that law even a law for people? So even people who own their own land, they tell you on your own land. This is their land, food. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to pull it up. I'm, I'm going to pull up just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is a big deal, Vanessa. Yeah, this so my question is this what's to stop them if okay if they this is just all crazy i don't even know where to start but <laughs> if they bomb black wall street and they try to tell people you can't grow your own food what's to stop them for trying to come at our uh, structures that we're putting in place and saying we don't we don't need them because we don't we never did but they always seem to come at <laughs> what we doing yeah well the good thing is again um we getting we 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 got technology at our our fingertips so they can't hide what they used to be able to hide no more i'm getting ready to pull something up right now on the internet to help you believe what i'm talking about so that's number one because information is king once you got the information yeah. then you can figure out how to work around that so they can't hide no more that's the best that's to me the best thing now <laughs> If they can't hide it now, who do we have in place so that why we can you, combat what they're doing? 
Huh? Yeah. Okay. So uh, here we go right here. Um, let me see if I can get it on the screen for you. But yeah, this is good. Okay, why well, I'm gonna wait on that to come up, but but uh, why you yeah, Vanessa, to... I'm glad like you I'm hearing this matters that you didn't know this, so I'm glad that this at least I want to show you something real quick. Oh, go ahead. I can't hear you. Can sign you see this? You see that? Can you see what's on my screen right now? That's a school, right? This is a, oh, This used to be an armory. Okay. And what's happened is a church has purchased it. <laughs> the church has purchased it, and they're turning it into a urban farm. And as you can see, there's some things they're already growing, the corn stalks over there. And I'm gonna try and get it. Uh, um, this is right, uh, right across the street from where I'm at. And, and I'm trying to pull in a little bit over in the back. I don't know if you can see it. The, I was trying to uh, yeah you're muted right now um Kendra you're muted um uh, while we're waiting on Kendra Vanessa can you see the screen can you see what I put up there Yeah, I can see it. You kind of breaking up though, but I can see you say Sustainable America. <clears throat> All right, that that's because I went on the internet. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna hurry up and get off of that because it's messing up my bandwidth, I can tell. But yeah, Vanessa, this is one of the websites right here uh, about that food sustainability and Florida Supreme Court has already declined to hear the case. So they kicked it down to the local, uh, you know, but this is just proof, right? It, you can go and look at this yourself. Um, let me close this out because I don't want it to keep messing up my screen here. Uh, can you hear me, Vanessa? Yes, I can hear you. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna send this to you in the chat box so that way you can just click on and look at it yourself. But um, the bottom line, you guys, seriously, we got to be okay. real um, um, woke that these people that's making these laws and doing stuff like this, these are the same people who uh, ancestors colonized, who is all about greed for them. It's all about control for them. And this is why, again, I'm excited that we, we too woke to tolerate that now. <laughs> you know, we, we ain't going, yeah. as they say. The young people say, we ain't going. <laughs> right, going. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, wow, it's interesting that uh, oh, I'm super hungry. Kendra said New World Order, and that just made me think about um, in the Christian faith, there's the belief that um, once Jesus returns, there will be the seven years of tribulation, and one of the things is when you um you won't be able to buy or sell anything without the mark of the beast. 
And so I was thinking, I, in my mind, I was like, okay, well, those people who get left behind, you know, they better grow something in their backyards and they, you know what I'm saying? But now come to find out. So this is like, it's like it's already starting. Like they monopolizing the way people won't even be able to um, sustain themselves without having to buy something from someone else. That's very interesting. But but again, the beauty is what's being built where literally every every month we go know who is in our army fighting to protect us from every arena. Education wise, team four, food wise, team seven, who go be fighting to protect us, legal wise, team eight, Rose Joshua in Chicago, our superstar. We know every month what last name people is standing watch for us. That's what to me is like just amazing because no one is getting burned out you only watching twice a year because every month someone else is watching for us and it means we got the whole year covered we got sustainability no burnout <laughs> and another, and another thing too cat uh, i keep on saying cat because that's my grandson's name another thing too sir is um you know to me that's another form of slavery when you think about it you know, you got to buy from me. You got to, you know, you can't do it yourself, but you have to buy from me. You control. Know? Nah, at, at the end of the day, yeah. it's all Matrix. control. Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so so we good on this, you guys. I'm glad y'all had a chance to see it. Vanessa, I just inboxed you the site so you will have it uh, yourself and you can read up on that. But please know, Food is team seven. So every time you cook food, Kendra, <laughs> Vanessa, that's team seven. Team seven. Every time you prepare food, and we got people that this all they do from restaurant owners, chefs, caterers, farmers, this all they do is all things dealing with food all day. And none of the ones we talk to and we work with under team seven banner in Atlanta, in Gary, in Chicago, in New York, team seven is the same. Uh, and we getting them to come together nationwide, y'all. Amen, Ashe. So yeah, I'm gonna have to check out of this meeting. Um, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. stay. I'm gonna stay logged in just because as I come in and out of my room, I, I'm gonna still be. I still want to tune in. So yeah, if you yeah. don't hear me say anything, <laughs> it's because I'm gone. <laughs> nah, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. And, and again, we will see you again in February. Oh, yeah, because it's every six months. Well, look, let me say this, too. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to post in, because this is live. Is it is it live on your page, Siron? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, okay, so, Siron, do you know about the Southside Food Co-op in Chicago? I heard of them, but go ahead and uh, tell us about them. So I can't say a whole lot about it because I'm just new to it and I'm just learning about it as well. But it's it's definitely something that I want to do. But my understanding of it and my understanding of a co-op in general is, you know, we all putting in for this grocery store. So we all putting our money in for this because that's one of the things that I feel that there's been missing because you can always go somewhere and get black, you know, black hair care products and um black fashion is easy to find. Um most things you can find a black mechanic, black restaurants, every, but I'm like I need groceries and I need tissue and I can find black tissue. I got my black tissue, but where's the black grocery stores? I don't eat restaurant food every day. Right. So that's, that was something for me good to see because now I have a black grocery store to shop at, right. but it's also a business opportunity because I can be a co-owner of the grocery store. So that's something that I want to, um, I'm gonna find the link and then post it under this um under this video in the comment section. That way people can just click on it and go and find out for themselves and possibly, you know, be one of the co-owners of the black grocery store that's starting. I don't know if it's just getting started or how long it's been happening, but it's something that's relatively new. So Yeah. Yeah. And and, and Ina Jones has a food truck and she's opening up. This is a black sister from Inglewood and Roseland. So she's doing it. So we need to make sure that the co-op know about her too, because we need all hands on yeah. deck moving forward. Yeah, and can you post her her name or information in there too? Because if she got a truck, yep, she can probably come back, <laughs> come back my block. Yeah, that's right. So, that's yeah. right. 
All right, well, appreciate you, Vanessa, again. Thank you for joining in, and uh, we we catch you again in February in six months. Okay, see y'all later. All right, Kendra, uh, we're going to move gears real quick. We're going to talk about government, and then okay. uh, we're going to be closing out with the Gary real Convention. Quick, uh, real quick, I didn't oh, get ahead. a chance to mention it with education. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we lost a very powerful advocate, and... Um, we his his home going was today. His name was Harold Lloyd Jones, uh, Jr. And he was a former president of the Dads Organization. And he also worked with me with Region Five Title One Parent uh, Organization. Okay. And he um, he was involved with the American Male Institute with Region Five. And what it was, was it was a program where they, um, it was a program where they taught African-American male family members to be involved in their family members' education. So, you know, uh, condolences to his family. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it just made me think, you know, we, we have really got to concentrate on training others to take our place and to pass the torch. The, the good thing is we are doing that. It's called Ray, R-A-Y. That's Retirees, Adults, Youth for Every Profession. Retiree uh, uh, Carpenters, Retiree Adult Carpenters, Youth that want to become Carpenters. Ray. <laughs> so, that, you know what I mean? Like, that's the key. All right. All right, Kendra, you next? got uh, uh you that was it you had to say. Yeah, I didn't want to uh miss him and then I don't know if you heard I'm trying to get some more information. There's a gentleman who just opened a plumbing school, African American gentleman, and he's trying to teach uh have a construction school to teach plumbing, electrical and construction. And as soon as I find out more information, I'll try and get that to you. But that's he's here beautiful. in Gary trying to do that. No, I, I love hearing that. That's that's good. That's music to my ears. So <laughs> that let's do that. Let's loop that in. So uh, now we're going to move on to team number eight. That is our uh, legal team. And the key with this, you guys, is we have legitimate lawsuits that could be uh, filed on our behalf. The clear Lloyd. Lucas said this man is Harold Lloyd Jones. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Gary too. What? So yeah, he's he's Gary. So <laughs> I'm good, baby. Uh, yeah. No, nah, that yeah. So okay, good. Now, all right, I'm back on now. Okay, Kendra, you can hear me. I'm back, Kendra. Yeah, I can see you. Um Uh, Kendra Johnson. Yes, Kendra Johnson. Oh, Johnson. 